All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Cap World's Think Tank. And uh, as you all are coming on in here, if you're watching live or re-watching, do me a favor. I want you to comment. I want you to like. But most importantly, I want you to share this. Send this to some friends. Uh, send this to your networks. Tag some people in the chat. And uh, let your circles know uh, that we are live uh, this evening. And uh, tonight's going to be a great discussion. I'm looking forward to sharing uh, what I believe the Holy Spirit has uh, kind of given me uh, for this uh, uh, month's think tank uh, for NACAP World. So if you're watching live, let me know where you're coming from. I'm looking at the comments and I'm going to share this really quickly. I'm going to share this. And then those that are tuning in live, those that will rewatch this, uh, please feel free to ask questions. Please feel free to engage, comment, like, share, all of that good stuff. It's going to be good. All right. Uh, let me first uh, start off by talking a little bit about uh, this network and uh, what this network represents and who we are in a nutshell. Uh, I'm looking I am looking forward to the future uh, of this fellowship. When we began to build uh, a network, this network, the cap, the cap stands for the North American Council of apostles and prophets. And the sole purpose of this network was solely to gather equipping gifts uh, from various streams of the body of Christ who are serving their region, serving their communities, leading their own works, leading their own organizations. But we really wanted to come together to build a sense of community and to build a sense of co a conversation, to place emphasis on various areas, theologically, doctrinally, culturally, which is why we uh, built this network upon three simple pillars. Number one, we wanted to empower women because in our day right now, women are, are the punching bags of religion, whether we like it or not, whether we believe this or not. And although you may have women who are pioneering in your area, there is still an enormous amount of suppression for women in ministry, women in leadership. And so NACAP wanted to press the issue and come together and make our number one pillar empowering women. And although you hear a lot of organizations talk that, but we wanted to embody. And so uh, everything we do, our, our summits, our think tanks, uh, our meetings, our logistics, our leadership, our boards, everything we do, we want to make sure that we are building holistically. We're building with women, not just a part of the thing, but women are leading the thing with us. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Number one, we wanted to empower women. Number two, we wanted to engage missions. We wanted to build a fellowship, a network, a community of equipping gifts that are partnering with things that are happening right in our backyard. Uh, we wanted to build something that would touch our communities, uh, even if we're not the face of it, but because we have people in our fellowship, in our network, who's pioneering, who's reaching these people, then the cap can get behind those uh, initiatives. And then lastly, we wanted to equip leaders. And um, we do that by honestly hands-on training, teaching. Uh, we we host schools of the prophets. Uh, we host uh, apostolic engagement nights. We host uh, teacher engagement nights. We host uh, nights of engagement where we train, where we teach, where we pour, and where we love on equipping gifts. And honestly, that's who we are in a nutshell. And networks like this, networks like this are, 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 are networks that really, really pioneer uh, for the long haul. And so I want to encourage everybody that's watching, everybody that's Tony again will rewatch this. I want you to pray about partnering, being a part of this community, being a part of this network. Uh, um, this uh, this network is a family. This network is is there's no there's no big you, little me, well, none of that stuff. You could be a part no matter what journey, no matter where you come from. All right, all right. So now that we said that, I got a couple more things I want to share, and then we're going to jump right into our topic tonight. Next month in January, we are coming to Atlanta, and we're going to be hosting an Atlanta regional in January. And uh, I want you all that you that are in Jan you that are in January, <laughs> you that are in Atlanta, I want you all to make plans to attend uh, to attend our uh, regionals, which will take place on Friday. Uh, January, uh, I believe it is the 29th uh, of January, 28th of January, I'm sorry, 28th and 29th of January, and uh, we're going to be in Atlanta, and more information will come, and if you want more information, all you have to do is follow our page, go on our social medias, and you'll see uh, that all of that is available for you. Listen, it is going to be 
powerful. Do you hear me? January 28th, our very own is going to be speaking. Apostle Nakia Oshai, she's going to be sharing. Saturday morning, we got workshops set up for all of the leaders, all of the equipping gifts uh, that would attend, uh, that will come and attend that gathering, that that training. We got worship uh, with, with with Sam uh, and, and his wife uh, Melissa. Uh, uh, his wife Melissa. They're going to be leading worship. It is going to be powerful. All right, I want y'all to mark your calendars for that. All right, it's going to be amazing. All right. Let's jump into our teaching and what we're going to talk about tonight. I, I want to talk to you all uh, from this simple subject, Jesus, the sender, Jesus, the sender. I want to talk to you all from the subject, Jesus, the sender. And the reason why I, I'm talking about Jesus, the sender tonight is because we are in December and you all that are part of the body of Christ and in your local churches, you know, baby Jesus dominates December. We got to We got to put him in a manger in December and then we got to hurry up. He got to hurry up and grow because we got to put him on the cross in April, March or April. No, I'm just kidding. But seriously, this is a month where a lot of emphasis becomes very nostalgic. We begin to uh, really lose a lot of the uh, present identity, present reality present power of Christ in our life right now. And I want to show you all something tonight. All right. As you come in, do me a favor and share it, comment, like, Hey there, Apostle Martina, bless you. Thank you for being on. Um, um, we're going to talk about that tonight. I want to show you how we as equipping gifts are not necessarily inventing the wheel, but we are actually following a practice that Jesus embodies and shows us through scripture. So I, I got a lot of scripture. I'm not going to read them, but I do want to give reference to these scriptures. Okay. All right. So before we jump into this, I want to deal with something because the root word of the, of the word apostle comes from the Greek word. It's two words, actually. It's apostolos. It's two words, and it literally means sent one. All right, it's sent one, a messenger, missionary. Uh, these are uh, ambassador, uh, uh, a pioneer. Uh, one, uh, uh, if you want to be more modern, trailblazer. These are these are the definitions of apostles. Now, watch this. I am not sanctioning everyone to be an apostle, but I believe everyone, every believer, every leader in the body should be apostolic every leader. There should be an apostolic function in your life, an apostolic grace in your life. There should be something in your life that's pushing you to the front, pushing you forward, pushing you beyond. And, and there's this grace to, 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 to be sent, to go forward, to introduce to a region uh, uh, new things, ideas, strategies. This is the earmark of the apostolic. Apostolic people are pioneering people, all right? And I want to say that because if we are apostolic people, if we are sent ones, watch this, then we have to study the person or who sent us. Jesus is the sender. And unfortunately, I don't want to get in trouble when I say this, y'all. Unfortunately, the reason why the body of Christ is in such a malnourished position, in such a feeble position, in such a dysfunctional position is because we have, pe we have people who are claiming to be sent, but they were not sent by Jesus. All right. All right. <laughs> we got people, we got gifts that are claiming to be sent ones. And the kid says she's going to put me on a timer. I got my timer going. You ain't got to put me on a timer. I, I got my timer now playing. Put me on the timer for real. We got we got people. <laughs> What's up, Bishop, Bishop Kirby? Martina, that's right. Jesus is the center. Come on. We got people. The reason why the body is in such a dysfunctional, petty, uh, malnourished position. It's because we have people who came to us in the name of Jesus, but Jesus did not send them. They're, they, they, they're, they, they haven't been sent by Christ. They were sent by something else. They were sent by someone else. They may have been sent by division. They may have been sent by offense. They may have been sent. And so what we have to realize is that we are not sent to a region or to do what we're doing, to pioneer, to establish ministries, to write books. We're not doing what we do because we fell out with somebody. But there, there, there was a private encounter with the head of the church. Come on here. There, there was a burden that Jesus put on us. There was something that Christ would not let us shake. We were trying to get away from this. We were trying to do something else. Oh my goodness. We were trying to quit. We wanted to throw in the towel. We wanted to run away. We said, Lord, let me be a plumber. Let me do that. And here we go. Here come Jesus just messing us up, putting the weight on us, waking us up at five in the morning, waking us up at six in the morning, making us call people, text people. It, come on here. You know why? 
because we have been sent by Jesus. When you have not been sent by Christ, you don't carry the burden of Christ. You carry the burden of the issue that birthed you. Oh, that's a problem. That's a problem. Let me explain. When you have been sent by Christ, because Jesus is the sender, if Jesus sends us, then we carry this burden. <laughs> Lord, help me. Sarah, what's the, oh, Sarah, I got to invite you too. Uh, uh, when Jesus sends us, we carry this burden from the sender. Every, okay, all right. Anyone that is a representation of another, they carry similar DNA, similar burden, similar interests. For example, if I ask my wife, hey, I want you to represent me, da 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 Shanae, take care. You know, you, I want you to represent me, da 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 Watch this. When Shanae shows up to whatever field is in, the people that see her, because she, because I sent her, they're, all, they're not expecting Shanae to be Shanae. Watch this. They're expecting Shanae to convey to them what I conveyed to her. So, so, so. Because we have been sent by Jesus, watch this, y'all, when people encounter us, they're not encountering, they're not, they're not coming to see you. They're, they're not coming to follow you. They're not coming to buy, they're not coming to buy your t-shirt. They're not coming to follow your brand. They're coming to meet the person that sent you. Come on here. And so because Jesus sends us, we carry a burden. We carry, we carry his DNA, his interest, his desire. It's why we can't do what we want because Jesus sent us. Many of you all that are watching this live and will rewatch this live. Many of you all, your, some of your testimonies is I'm not here because I want to be here. Come on here. I'm not preaching here because I, I want to preach. I'm not serving here because I want to serve. Jesus won't leave me alone. Come on here. <laughs> Some of you all, your testimony is I'm here because Christ, I mean, I'm, 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 Christ has me anchored and there's a burden. So watch this. Whoever sends you, there is a like mindedness. There is a similar burden, a similar DNA. And unfortunately, the body of Christ is in the shape that we are in because we have people who came to us who did not come from Christ. Okay, I want to show you this in scripture. I want to show you this in scripture. That there's a passage in Acts 15. The Bible talks about this because there was an issue with the Jewish, I'm sorry, with the Gentile converts. And the Bible talks about how the Gentile converts, there were some apostles who came uh, 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 who came from the from the Jerusalem council and when they came to the Gentile converts they were they were telling the, the, the new converts you really not saved unless you honor the law of Moses and so watch this and so the church in Jerusalem had to send uh, apostles to them they had to send Paul and Barnabas to them and other ones I'm in Acts 15 if you all want to read it yourself Acts 15 1 uh, I believe it is through like 10 or something like that and so watch this they had to come together and they had to send uh, apostles to, to the Gentile converts because watch this, y'all. Somebody came to them that was not sent by the Jerusalem church. And I said that to say this, if we are not careful, <clears throat> if we are not careful, we will continue a cycle of allowing people to pour and preach and lay hands on our people and, and come into our cities and regions that Christ did not send. And we got, and, and this is where we're at. We're, 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 we are, we are in between the, 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 we are in between authenticity and imitation. Mm, Lord help me. We, we are, we are in such a delicate space right now in the body. Uh, COVID-19 pushed us to where now we're questioning everything. Uh, somebody sneezed. You looking over the over your, your over your shoulder. Come on here. So somebody cough a little bit. You, you you're looking over your shoulder. COVID pushed us into a space where we are in between authenticity and imitation. And this is where the church is. The church is asking, where are the authentic gifts? Mm. Where, where are the gifts who don't need an offering to say hello? Come on here. Where are the gifts who don't need people to, you ain't got to sow a, a prophetic seed to get a word from the Lord. Where are the authentic gifts? We are in between imitation and authenticity. And unfortunately, both look and sound the same. The test of the authentic versus the test of the imitation is the pressure that you apply. Lord help me. And that's, I'm getting ahead of myself. Every equipping gift 
when you have been sent by Jesus, watch this, you are prepared for the pressure that will come from your assignment. If you're complaining about pressure, if you're saying, you know what, I, I, I'm not called to this. Let me tell you something. You got a whole journey ahead of your pressure because when God sends you, he prepares you for the pressure. All right. And so this is what we are. The church, the world, the systems of the world, people are looking for authenticity, authentic leaders, authentic teachers. Come on. Authentic prophets, authentic apostles, authentic gifts, not imitation. We're not trying to relive the days of old. We're not trying to bring the church back to the 60s and 70s. We're not trying to do what we saw our great grandparents doing. I'm not knocking that style, but we're looking for authenticity. And unfortunately, this is what we are. And so watch this. I want to get to my notes because when Jesus sends the gifts, when Jesus sends gifts, equipping gifts, fivefold gifts, he does it for uh, about five reasons. All right. All right. Number one, he sends us to a people. All right. He sends us to a people. He sends us to a people. Many of you all, you have been called to a people. Many of you all, you've been anointed for a people. Many of you all, you've been you you have been pushed to a people. And one of the tests that you are not with the people that God wants you to be with. Lord, help me. I'm about to get in trouble here. Every time you try to pour, you get stoned. Mm. Paul Paul makes up in his mind after the last time he gets stoned and the Bible says that the elders of the of the of the elders have to come and they pray him back to life. Paul said, you know what? I'm done. I, I'm, I'm not trying to fit in with the church no more. I'm not trying to fit in with these religious people no more. I'm take I'm going I'm going to Corinth. I'm going I'm going to Asia Minor. I'm going to these different regions and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do this anymore. You know why? Because Paul realized that this wasn't the people that he was called to. And so watch this. If if you are an equipping gift, you have been sent to a people. Mm. Oh my, if we were in church, I would tell you, repeat after me. I have a people. Come on. You've been sent to a people. Number two, you've been sent to a region. There's a region waiting on you. Lord, help me. There's a region waiting on you. There's a, there's a geographical space waiting on you. Come on. There's a grace on your life that is specifically designed for a region. And this is why sometimes equipping gifts have to transition. This is why you can be in, you can be, you can be in Brooklyn and God to expand your ministry all the way in, in LA somewhere. This is why, because there's an anointing, there's a grace. There's there's an, there's an authority that comes on you when you are in your region. Mm. And I'm not, I'm not saying this to brag or boast, but I, I, I believe that the Lord has opened up the Bahamas for me. I believe that strongly. I, I, I go to the Bahamas and the, it seems like the heavens open up and I just, I, I just feel, I feel at home. I feel, I feel it's a region. I feel it's a region that God has sent me to. So watch this equipping gifts. Number one, you are sent to a people. Number two, you are sent to a region. And the reason why is because Jesus embodies this. Uh, John chapter number four, if you're taking notes before Jesus meets the woman at the well, he said to himself, I have to go to Samaria. Area. I got to go to a new region. I prophesy, oh Lord, help me. I prophesy over all these gifts, these leaders, these apostles, these prophets, that the Father is going to begin to give you a burden for a region. I pray even now that you would we, you would wake up at wee hours of the night, weeping over cities that you've never been to. I pray, I prophesy you're going to begin to weep and mourn and, and travail over cities that you have never been to. The Lord says, it's going to be a year where I wake you up for your region. All right. All right. Number one, you have a people. Number two, you have a region. Number three, equipping gifts are sent for a time. Ooh, Lord, help me. <laughs> equipping gifts are sent for a time. You are sent for you are sent for a time. Equipping gifts are sent for a time. In other words, God has set, God will set the moment up for you so that you can impart, stretch, pour, and release into a people. There's, there's a time for the equipping gift. There's a time for the gift that's on your life. And, and, and this is this is the frustrating part. If I could just talk to y'all tonight. A lot of times equipping gifts, it is not that you don't have the skill. It is not that you don't have the anointing. It is not that you don't have the grace. It may not be your time. 
Woo, Lord, help me. It, it's not that you don't have the revelation. It, it's not that you're not gifted. It's not that you haven't spent time in the presence of the Lord. It's not that God hasn't downloaded a revelation to you. It may not be your time. So watch this. Equipping gifts have to discern when is it my time? And this is the dilemma of the equipper because you are sent to a people, you are sent to a region, but number three, you are sent for a time. My question to y'all tonight, what do you do when God gives you a download and makes you wait? Mm. What do you do when God begins to give you a burden? He gives you revelation of your assignment. He begins to reveal X, Y, Z. And then he closes the conversation off by saying, all right, daughter, now I want you to sit here and wait. I, th there, there, there is such, a, there is such a, a, a revelation in discerning your time. Because if you jump ahead of the time that God has for you, you put yourself in so much warfare. You're fighting to get it done. You're, you're pushing to get it done. But if you would wait for your time. I believe every equipping gift has a time. Not only do you have a people, come on, not only do you have a region, but you have a time. Come on here. You got a time. There's a time for your gift. And I prophesy that you're getting ready to walk. You're walking into your time. You're walking into your season. You're walking into your moment. God has been trying to prepare us for a time. Number four, number four, equipping gifts. And this is this is a little outside of the church world. Equipping gifts are also called or sent to an industry. Mm. Equipping gifts are sent to an industry or to an area of influence. Uh, I can't think of the guy who wrote the book, but they would call it a mountain of influence. Equipping gifts are sent to an industry. I know equipping gifts who are equipping the saints, who, who are serving a local church, but man, they're seeing manifestation. They're seeing, I, I know I know someone right now when, when the Hamilton play was going on. I know someone right now and, and the Hamilton play, the cast, all of them basically grew up in church, grew up in church their whole life. And I know someone right now who was, who, who, who they were, who the Hamilton cast would invite to come do Bible study with them. And they were coming in and do Bible study, teaching Bible study. And in the rehearsal at the Hamilton play, people were receiving Jesus. People were, 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 were being healed. Relationships were being restored. People were being free from trauma. People were being free from all of this stuff. Watch this. Because that person's gift, although they are called to equip the saints, watch this. There's the Sometimes the saints, come on, may not necessarily be in a church building. So you could be an equipping gift and God can send you to an industry. Mm. Lord, help me. I'm trying to free y'all tonight. I'm trying to free gifts from fighting over the pulpit. I'm, I'm trying to free gifts from being frustrated by, by what they are not seeing in their life and not seeing in their ministry. You may be called to an industry. Come on here. You may serve as a little, you know, you may you may serve as at as, 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 as church on Sunday morning. You may serve as one of the ministers. You may serve as one of the, the, the missionaries. You may serve as a greeter. You may serve as the youth pastor. Watch this. But the glory and the grace and the sub substance that is on your life, it, start, it, it, it gets pulled on when you get an education. They put you in the classroom and all of that oil starts coming out of you. Come on here. They put you they put you in government and you start solving issues. They put you in business and the glory and the grace starts to come. Why is that? Because equipping gifts are also sent to an industry, to an industry. All right, my last point, and then I got to keep going. Number five, number five, equipping gifts, watch this, are sent to religious industry or religious organization or churches. All right, equipping gifts will find themselves serving not just one church. I, I want to deal with this really quickly because there is, there is this, uh, how do I say this? There is this uh, humiliation that that we see given to equipping gifts because uh, many many equipping gifts uh, will, will 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 be a member of one church, but they'll be visiting other churches. And, and let me go ahead and deal with that really quickly because because equipping gifts they are they are they are magnets to the body of Christ in their area. And so to to say that they're only going to go to one church or to say that they're gonna they're not going to go to church at all, I mean that that's that's up to them. But equipping gifts will find find themselves serving and ministering to the bot to the church to the local assembly to the assemblies around the country and they may not necessarily sit in one every week all right 
They may not necessarily be on the board of one. They may not necessarily serve in one, but they may they may attend one. But God will open up religions, uh, religious churches to them. And so fivefold gives you are sent by Jesus and you're sent to religious organizations or churches or communities of faith. So let me recap those five things. And then I'm going to I got three more things to share and I'm done. Number one, equipping gifts. When Jesus sends equipping gifts, Jesus sends equippers to a people, to a people. All right. <laughs> when Jesus sends equipping gifts, he sends them to a region. The Bible says that he called the apostles to themselves and he laid hands on them. And he said, right, now I give you power and authority to lay hands on the sick and all that good stuff. All right. Number three, equipping gifts are sent for a time, a generate, a, a, a generation. Uh, Paul said that I was an apostle born out of due season. Paul said I, 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 it wasn't my time to walk with the apostles. He said, I'm, a, I'm an apostle born out of due season. Number four, Equipping gifts are also sent to an industry. Uh, people like Daniel, who was who was a who who I believe was a prophet. Many theologians have argued was he a prophet or not, but I believe he was a prophet. I believe he was a prophet, and I believe Daniel is an embodiment of this. He he's in the government. He's in the government of Babylon, and he's rising to the top. Come on, he's in an industry. Come on, I believe Lydia is is a type of uh, is a type of this as well. A seller of purple, a woman of influence, a woman of wealth, but also a woman of faith, a woman of prayer. A woman who had such a huge influence that the apostles had to come to her house. Come on here. So watch this. You can be called to an industry. But then number five, sometimes equipping gifts will find themselves serving churches or serving communities of faith, no matter where those communities are. All right. All right. So I gave you all those five little basic points for a reason to show you all where Jesus sends us because Jesus himself found himself in all five of these areas. Let me show you how Jesus found himself among a people. He said this to the disciples. He said this in Luke. I believe it is six. I wrote here. I might be wrong, but he said to the Luke in Luke, he said that the well don't need a physician. He said that I didn't come from the well. I didn't come from the, I didn't come. I didn't come for the people that are doing well. He said, I came for the sick. They need a physician. Come on. But Jesus also was called to a region. The Bible talks about how he said, I got to go to Samaria, how he had to cross the other side. Come on here. All right. But then also Jesus was sent for a time. Lord, help me. Number three, he, tell, he tells Mary in John chapter number two at the wedding of Cana when they were running out of wine. I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm trying to lay this out for y'all. He tells Mary, Mary says, Jesus, we're running out of wine. Come on. The barrels are almost empty. And Jesus tells Mary, it is not my hour yet. Ooh. My hour hasn't come yet because Jesus knew he was called to a time. Woo! Number four, Jesus knew he was called to an industry, which is why Jesus found himself amongst the Pharisees and Sadducees. He found himself having a, 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 a philosophical argument with Pontius, Pontius Pilate. Come on. He found himself talking with the tax collectors because Jesus knew he was called to an industry. And then lastly, Jesus knew he was called to a religious enter, uh, church or, or, or faith-based community, which is why he ministered in the synagogues. All right. All right. Y'all got that. Now, now that we see how Jesus sends us, I want to show my, share with this last few minutes about the tension points, though, because although Jesus sends us, there are there are tension points within us that we have to go through, that we have to overcome in order for us to be effective in the area where we're going to serve. All right. So let me keep going. All right. There are tension points you got to overcome, all right? If you're taking notes, I want y'all to just kind of go over this. Number one, the, one of the first tensions that you're going to have to overcome is discerning your message versus your motive. Discerning your message versus your motive. That is a tension point. And the reason why that is a tension point, because sometimes if we're not careful, our motive will get in front of our message. One of the dangerous things that can happen to the body of Christ is an unhealed equipping gift trying to lead the body to the future. Because what happens is we tend to lead from our motive and we don't lead from our message. You got to discern. I'm about to run through him. You got to discern. Is this my message or is this my motive? Ooh, Lord, help me. Mm. Am I building or am I bleeding? All right. All right. All right. 
Is this my message or is this my mo? And, and this is where we're at because it, it's one of the most dangerous things that can happen to the body is when we get gifts who have charisma, when we get gifts who got a word of knowledge, when we got gifts, they got a word of wisdom. We got gifts that can flow here and there. And, and, and what ends up happening is their motive gets in front of their message. And if this is what causes the body to end to, to be in such friction and issue because we don't know how to discern our motive versus our versus our message. I, I'm guilty of this. All right, I, I'm, I'm about to get in trouble. I'm about to get don't log off the kids, stay on there. I, I, I'm guilty of this. I the Holy Spirit had to say, Lewis, that's not my that's not your message, that's your motive. Mm. You got to stay faithful. Okay, let me let me calm down. You got to you you as the equipment gives, you have to stay faithful to your message even if even if it means you have to move away from why you why what you're trying to get accomplished in your own personal life, your motive, you got to watch that because is this your motive or is this your message? Mm. Let me show you this in scripture. Uh, I, I wrote here, I, I, this scripture might be wrong, but I believe it is Acts chapter number uh, 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 13, uh, 11 or 13. It's one of those chapters. It's in Acts where, where Peter meets uh, 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 Peter meets uh, uh, Simon, Simeon, Simon the sorcerer. And Simon sees Peter laying hands on the sick and people receiving the Holy Ghost and flowing in tongues and all of that stuff. And watch this. Simon walks up to Peter and, and, and opens up his little cash app. Tell me some Peter, what's your cash app? I'm, I, I need... I need this power. I need this type of thing. I need, if I had that, man, my my my, my witchcraft business, my fortune telling business would go through the roof. And Peter had to rebuke him because the man could not discern motive versus his message or motive versus ministry. This is what we are in the body. You have to learn how to discern, is this my message or is this my motive? I, 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 I can't say it enough. I can't say it enough because this is what the body said. We're, we're giving people our motive and we're not giving them a message. Lewis, how do you know if I'm giving somebody my motive or my message? Okay, here's how you know. Are they becoming more like Christ or are they becoming more like you? Okay, let me find something to throw. When you get done, are they becoming more like Christ or are they becoming more like you? Do they sound like Jesus or do they sound like your pain? Ooh, Lord help me. Do, do they do they do, do you hear the heart of the Father? Do you hear the love of Jesus? Do you hear the wisdom of God? Do you hear growth? Do you hear maturity? Come on. Do you hear soundness of mind? Come on. Do you hear faith? Do you hear hope? Come on. Do you hear that or do you hear your pain? One of the signs that you are that your motive and ministry have gotten put in the same pot is when your people that follow you or listen to you, they echo your pain and not your revelation. Mm. Number one, this is the, the tension point. If Jesus is going to send us, if Jesus is going to send you, you have to overcome these tension points in your life. Number one, discern your message versus your motive. Number two, Folk, number two, number two, number two. I got to keep going. I'm almost out of time. Number two, if Jesus is going to send us, one of the tension points that we have to do, we have to focus on our strengths, watch this, and not magnify our weaknesses. Uh, let me spend some time here because I thought that if I am an apostle, or if that I, if I am apostolic, if I'm fivefold, if I'm a prophet, if I'm whatever, I thought that if I was an apostle, then I had to move in, 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 in category A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I, if I'm an apostle, then okay, I gotta write books. Okay, I got, I, I, I okay, I, I need, I need to grow limbs back. Okay, number four. Okay, I, I, I need to flow in the prophetic. I need, I need to have word of knowledge. Uh, okay, all right, I need to have a visitation from Jesus. I need to physically see Jesus's hands, the holes in his hands, and all that stuff. And, 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 and what happens in our minds is. We spend so much time trying to, uh, uh, how do I say this, increase areas in our life where we don't have the grace to do certain things that we overlook what Christ gave us. You're not going to be effective. You're, you're not going to be effective if you don't focus on what did God give me? Ooh. 
when Moses is standing at the Red Sea, he doesn't ask Moses, call Miriam to come sing. When Moses is standing at the Red Sea, the Lord says, Moses, what is in your hand? Because if God is going to send us, he's going to use what he gave us. If, 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 if God is going to send us, he's not going to, he's not going to send us and then highlight what we don't have and highlight what we're not good at and highlight what we're lacking and highlight, oh, you don't prophesy like such and such, or you don't pray like such and such, or you don't have a word of knowledge like such and such. Oh, 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 oh I don't, I, no, I didn't see no miracles from them. I don't know. They may not be, they may not be what they are. If, 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 if we don't learn how to, how to use what's in our hand. Oh my, I, I wish I had time to, I wish I had time to, 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 to help, to help us tonight and, and really deal with that. I love it. Let me pause really quickly. Apostle Martinez said, I was up on a ladder pen and almost fell twice on this <laughs> Lord Jesus. The kid said, what is my message? What is, come on. What is my message? Uh, Prophet Todd said, what, what's your motive, beloved? Come on. I'm, I mean, come on. That's it. That's it. That's it. The kid said, I, I don't like how you're talking to me. No, 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 no. I, I'm just I'm just trying to help the saints because 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 this is this is a tension point. This is a tension point. Number one, we got to discern our message from our motive. Number two, we got to focus on our strengths and not magnify our weaknesses. We can't focus on what we're not good at. We can't focus on what we're not anointed to do. Look, let me tell you something. Let me let me say something. I have every now and then when I'm doing gatherings, miracles do take place. Healings take place. I, I have seen healings. I have seen miracles take place. I've seen I've seen healings take place. I, I've, I have. I have. I am a man of faith. I, I am. But I don't necessarily always see miracles to the degree that other people do. Now, watch this. Because I, I have learned how to focus on what God gave me, I, I don't even compare my, my grace or my function to the next. Because when I do that, I start to lose focus on, on, on what God gave me. And I start to zoom in on what I'm looking at and what I'm looking at in somebody else's life. And when you do that, watch this, y'all. When you do that, you begin to get off course. Um, uh, when I'm, when my family's from Mississippi and, and, and Mississippi, there's some areas in Mississippi and in the South that's so dark, you know, you can't even sometimes see the hand, your hand in front of your face. I like, seriously, and, and 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 there's this. You're, you're driving on these roads, and 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 if you're not careful, if you get over too much, you're, you're off the road. If you get over too much to the right, you're off the road. If you get over too much to the left, you're off the road. When as an equipping gift, you got to monitor your focus. You got to focus. You got to focus so much on Jesus. You got to focus so much on your assignment. You got to focus so much on what God has called you to do that you are not comparing what your, your weaknesses to someone else's strength. Because when you do that, you're leading yourself off your path. Number two, you cannot focus on your weaknesses. You got to focus on your strengths. There's a, there's a false teaching. You got, there's a false teaching that says, all right, strengthen what you're weak at. No, 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 no. You don't have to do that. This is why we're the body of Christ. Come on. Because the scripture says each joint, come on here, each joint supply. I'm saying stacking. I'm sorry. <laughs> Game banging on this, on this live. <laughs> each joint supply. Each joint. So watch this. What I'm weak at, when I'm in covenant with other equipping gifts, the body doesn't see my weakness. Mm. What I'm weak at, if I got Martina next to me, if I got Paul next to me, if I got Delinda next to me, watch this. What I'm weak at, the body's not going to see it because each joint supplies. But what? But again, what happens is we don't, we don't, we don't. In order for the joint to supply, there must be a, there must be a, 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 a connection. Come on, there must be, there must be a joint. There must be a joining together. But when we are divided, we magnify each other's weaknesses. Mm. Number two, we got to focus on our strengths. We can't focus on our weaknesses. Paul did not have a grace for for emerging leaders. Paul did not have a grace for emerging leaders. Paul doesn't gain a grace for emerging leaders until he meets Timothy. Before he meets Timothy, Paul had no grace. He, he Paul was so frustrated with the next generation of leaders that when John Mark 
uh, when, when Barnabas told Paul uh, on their second missionary journey, when Barnabas said, Paul, all right, let's go. I'm ready. I'm going to go get John Mark uh, and, and you get you get Silas. Paul said, wait, 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 wait. We, we're not bringing John again. The first time we brought John, he left. He quit. We're not doing this again. And the Bible talks about how their friction rose great. And they ended up going to separate. So Paul took Silas with him and, and Barnabas took John Mark with him, who, who would become the, the writer of Mark, who was who was actually a black man from the city of Alexandria. And, and so and so Paul had no grace. He had no patience for emerging leaders. Watch this. Watch this. At the beginning, he had no patience. He It wasn't until he meets Timothy where Paul begins to shift. And he begins to focus on the next generation. He meets Titus. He meets Timothy. Come on. He meets Sylvanus. Come on. He starts to pour into these guys because he, he again, at the beginning, that was his weakness. But when the body becomes jointly fit together, my weakness, watch this, is actually covered by your strength. This is what we are in the body. You got to focus on your strengths, not your weakness. Paul didn't have a grace for emerging leaders. Paul had an enormous grace for doctrine, debating. He had an enormous grace of revelation. But when it came to, to, to emerging leader, Paul, he didn't have a grace at the beginning. But watch this. It grew. So you can't focus on your weakness. And this is why many of you all are keep putting your stuff off. This is why many of you all keep canceling your vision because you're saying, I, I'm not as charismatic as this next person. And, 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 and again, until you overcome that. You're missing out on the five things I gave you earlier because when you walk in your anointing, you walk in your grace, you got five th things waiting on you. Remember what I told you at the beginning? You have a people waiting on you, a region, a time, an industry, a church, or faith community. These are the things that fivefold gifts are called to. All right, let's keep going. Number three, my last point, and I'm done. I want it to be done by in 45 minutes. Um, um, I want it to be done in 45 minutes. My last thing, my last thing, my last thing. Number three, and this is the most important, you can only pour into empty containers. Lord, help me. You can only pour in empty containers or containers that want to be filled. You cannot pour into a container that believes they're not lacking nothing. Mm. You cannot pour into a container uh, I wish I had an example. I'll show you. If 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 I want more water, and I, I got some, I, I got some water here. Some my wife been helping me out working every day and stuff. So I got I got some water here. It, it's halfway filled, halfway filled. I, I can go to the faucet. I can go to my refrigerator with the water thing. I, I can get a bottle of water and I can fill this thing up to the top because because I'm not filled up already and my mindset my, my mind says I can I, I can take another half bottle of water watch this what happens in the mindsets of people is they they, they 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 attend a conference they go to a women's weekend they go to a men's weekend they go to a prophetic weekend they go to they go to prophetic thrust unveil unlimited 2021 they come back and and and, and they feel like they're full. But in actuality, they need to be full. You cannot pour into people that don't believe they need it. Mm. You can't pour in. You can't pour as an equipping gift. I, I want to help you because some of you all have been wasting seed. All right. Some of you all have been, some of you all have been spilling. You, you've been, you've been, you've been, you've been pouring too much. Some of you all have been pouring into vessels, into containers that, that are full, that, that believe they're full to the top. Lord help me. <laughs> they, they think they're full. Uh, Paul said it to the Corinthians. He said, you Corinthians think you're full. He said, y'all think you think, y'all think y'all got everything. So, you know, y'all, y'all got it all together. And so you can't pour into that. You got to find empty containers. You got to find empty containers. Um, the Bible talks about in Jesus' ministry how one by one, the disciples were beginning to leave. And so Jesus looks at Peter and he says, Peter, are you going to leave too? And Peter says, Lord, where are we? Where, where am I going to go? He said, you hold the words of eternal life. Where am I, where am I going to go? In other words, Peter was saying, I need to be filled. I'm an empty container. What we are, what the problem with equipping gifts is sometimes we are attracted to the potential we see. Mm. 
and it makes us want to pour. But you cannot pour because you sense potential. You can only pour when people posture themselves in a place to be poured into. Wow. Apostle Martinez said, I just told the people this an hour ago. You cannot pour into people who think exactly, exactly. You can't do it. You can't do it. And, and I want to save y'all frustration because many of you all have been giving revelation to people that are sitting at everybody's table. Many of y'all you, you have been trying to wash feet. You've been trying to wash the feet of people and they everywhere. You can't, you can't wash people's feet and they and everybody, they, and every, they, 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 they're everywhere. You can't do that. You, you got to pour into people who position themselves. You can remember that. Number three, you can only pour into empty containers. Jesus mastered this. This is why everybody that Jesus meets, there is an emptying of themselves before him. The woman at the well emptied herself. Matter of fact, the, the revelation of the woman at the well, in my opinion, it's, it's the fact that the scripture says that she left her water pot there. Mm. She came with a water pot. But when she tasted the living water, she leaves the natural water there because she's full of the water that Jesus gives her. You cannot pour into empty containers. You cannot pour into empty containers. Matthew chapter number eight, the Bible says that a centurion comes to Jesus and he says, Lord, my servant is sick. He said, if you would, he said, I'm not worthy. Watch what he does. Watch what he does. He says, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. He says, I'm a man of authority just like you. I, I tell one go, he goes. I tell one come, he comes. He says, but if you would just speak your word, what did this man do? He emptied himself. Everyone that empties themselves before Jesus always got a manifestation. Everyone. And that, that is the posture. If you're going to pour, the vessel has to be willing to be emptied. All right, let me recap that. Number one, these are tension points, y'all. These are tension points. Number one, you got to discern your message versus your motive. Number two, you got to focus on your strengths and not your weaknesses. You can't be looking at everybody else's stuff. You got to focus on your strength. This is what I'm good at. This is what I'm good at. And I'm going to build covenant with other gifts who are strong where I'm weak. Number two, you got to focus on your strengths, not your weakness. Number three, you can only pour into emptied containers. That's it. You can't pour into nothing else. You can only pour to the empty container. That's my prayer for you. My prayer is that you would overcome all of these tension points in your life. My prayer is that you will overcome these tension areas. If you're going to be effective as an equipping gift, you got to remember you're called to a people. You're called to a region. You're called for a time. You're called to an industry. You're called to a religious church or a church, faith community, I should say. But then also, you got to overcome these tension points. Is this my message? Is this my motive? Focus on your strengths. Focus on your weak, not your weaknesses. Pour into empty containers. All right, I'm done, y'all. I'm done. I went about five minutes over, and um, I wanted to be done in 45 minutes because I knew that's what this would take. All right, I love y'all. Listen, tonight's message, teaching, think tank, was Jesus the sender. I am looking forward to seeing all of y'all soon. <laughs> Wrap this up because you're running long. No, I'm not. I typically go an hour and change, so I'm not going long. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing y'all, you that are able to join us in Atlanta, and uh, we'll be posting information. A uh, hotel link is available, and uh, let us know you're coming. If you're able to come Friday night, January 28th, Saturday 29th, you can be back home for church. You can be back home for your family by that Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening. And uh, it's going to be amazing. The time for that Saturday is uh, 9 a.m. Uh, till about 1 uh, p.m. And uh, it's going to be a great time. So, listen, I want to see y'all there, all right? The cap, our family that's coming, y'all are driving. Many of y'all have inbox been told you, told me. Uh, you're driving from Charlotte, you're driving from uh, 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 South Georgia, you're driving from the Carolinas, and I, that's what we wanted. We wanted to put this regional in a place where you can drive there. I'm flying in from Chicago. Many of my North people, we're going to fly in and, uh, and all that good stuff. All right. All right, y'all. I love y'all. Be blessed. Everybody, our next think tank is actually a think her, and it's going to be incredible. It's going to take place January 10th. All right, January 10th, that's a Monday night uh, in the new year. It's our first think tank of the brand new year. All right, and I'm looking forward to it. I love y'all. Be blessed, everybody. And uh, I hope to see y'all again. Stay tuned for everything that's coming up with uh, the cap. Love y'all. Be blessed, everybody.